Hi folks, today we're going to take a look at an alternative method for solving a system of equations. So in the past we've used the substitution method which uh, worked well as long as uh, one of the variables had a coefficient of 1 or negative 1 which made it easy to isolate. However, when none of the variables uh, had a coefficient of 1 or negative 1 we risked having to work with fractions which we'd like to avoid if we can. And we see that this method of elimination does the trick for us. Okay, so let's start by looking at an example. So we'll call this example 1, and we'll take a look at equation 1 being 2x plus y equals 11, and equation 2 will be x minus y equals 1. Now when we take a look at this example, we see that uh, substitution would work very well, because we indeed have three variables that are all easy to isolate. But we're going to consider another method here. So the premise of the elimination method is the fact that two sides of an equation are the same. That's what it means to be equal. They're the same. So the left side is equal to the right side in the first equation, and the left side is the same as the right side in the second equation. So if we were to add the two left sides, that would be the same as adding the two right sides. Okay? Or if we were to subtract the two left sides, that would be the same as subtracting the two right sides. So let's see how that can be helpful. So here I notice I have a y and a negative y. Well, if I were to add these two together, y plus negative y, that just gives y minus y, would give me 0. So I would succeed in eliminating one of the variables. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, so let's add the two equations together. Okay, so here I've got 2x plus x, 3x, y plus negative y, which is 0. So don't need to write that one down. And then 11 plus 1 is equal to 12. And what I'm left with is an equation that's very simple to solve. So now I can just solve x is equal to 12 divided by 3 is 4. And so in two simple steps, I managed to solve for the x value in this system of equations. Of course, though, there's two variables that I need to solve for, so I need the y value. And here we're going to do exactly what we did with substitution. Now that I know one of the x value, one of the variables, and here uh, I know x, I can just substitute that back into one of the equations. I can pick either one since uh, we're looking for a point of intersection. The x's and the y's are the same in both equations. So uh, I'm going to pick um, well, equation two. Looks like it might be a little easier. So we'll take equation two, and instead of writing x minus y, I can now substitute x by four. So 4 minus y equals 1. Okay, and uh, to just get rid of that negative here, I'll take this negative y to the right side. And here, take the 1 to the left side. 4 minus 1 is 3. And there we go. There's our answer. So we have x equals 4, y equals 3. Or if I'm being asked, asked specifically for the point of intersection, I can give my answer in coordinate form. So 4. Three. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So for this one here, we'll take a look at equation 1, which will be 2x minus 3y equals negative 17. And then for equation 2, we'll take x plus 2y equals 9. Now we notice that this example isn't quite as simple as the first because I don't have, you know, either two x's or two y's that I can easily get rid of. But um, I take a look at equation two. I have an x in equation one. I have a two x. By the way, I could solve this easily by substitution, but let's see how we can use elimination. So I need to do a little manipulation first. Okay. And remember that I can multiply a number to one side of an equation as long as I do the same to the other side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 2, and that'll give me a 2x, which is the same as what I have in the first equation. Okay, so I'll keep the first equation as it is, 2x minus 3y equals negative 17, and I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 2, and that's how I write it. So let's do that here, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 2y, so plus 4y, and then 2 times 9 is 18. 
Now here I notice that I have a 2x and a 2x, so I'm not going to add the two equations like I did before. I'm going to subtract them. Right? Now you notice before I put brackets around the second equation. This is really why I do it, because I need to make sure that I'm subtracting everything in the equation. And just to make sure I don't forget, I put brackets around it to remind me. So let's do that here. And I see 2x minus 2x, 0. So I've succeeded in eliminating a variable. Now I have negative 3y minus 4y. So that's negative 7y. Okay, and here I have negative 17 minus 18, which is negative 35. But as before, I now have a very easy equation to solve for this time the y variable. So y negative 35 divided by negative 7 is equal to 5. Okay, now do the same thing as before. Take this value for y and substitute it into one of the two equations. And again, equation 2 looks like it's the easier one to work with. So I'm going to work with equation 2 and uh, x plus 2 times instead of y. I can now replace it by its value of 5 is equal to 9. And so here x is equal to, well, 2 times 5 is 10. And 9 minus 10, bring it to the other side, is negative 1. And there we go. There's our answer x equals negative 1, y equals 5, or of course I can write it in point form, negative 1, 5. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at one final example. We'll call this example 3. Okay, and we're going to take a look at equation 1 being 2x minus 3y equals 1, and then equation 2 will be 3x minus 7y equals negative 6. Okay, so we'll just clean up, try to clean up that 6 as much as possible. All right, so let's compare to the ex other examples we looked at. Uh, in the first example, we had uh, the y's that had uh, just opposite coefficients of 1 and negative 1. They were very easy to eliminate. Uh, in the second example, we had an x and a 2x. We ju could just multiply x by 2 to get 2x. Here, not quite as simple, because there's no simple way to multiply 2 to get 3 or a simple way to multiply 3 to get 7. So the way we deal with that is by actually multiplying both equations. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 by a number and equation 2 by another number to achieve the same coefficient. Now I could do that either with the coefficients of x or the coefficients of y. Okay? Since the coefficients of x are a little smaller, those are the ones that I'm going to work with. So I try to think to myself, what would I have to multiply each equation by to get the same coefficient? And then I realize, well, if I multiply 2 by 3 and 3 by 2, I'll get 6 in both scenarios. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to multiply it by 3. So equation 1 times 3. So again, remember, everything and both sides of the equation has to be multiplied by 3. So 3 times 2, 6x. Okay, 3 times negative 3, negative 9y. And then 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, so perfectly legal to do that since I've multiplied both sides by 3. Now let's do the same, something similar for equation 2. We'll multiply that by 2. So 2 times 3 is 6x. Good, what I wanted, the same coefficient. 2 times negative 7 is minus 14y. And then here, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Okay, now I take a look here and since the signs are the same, I'm going to have to subtract these two equations in order to eliminate the variables. So I'm going to subtract, remember, put your brackets around there to remind you to subtract everything in the equation. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have 6 minus 6, 0, exactly what we wanted. Here we have negative 9 plus 14. Remember, if I subtract the negative, it becomes an addition. So negative 9 plus 14 will give me 5y. And then here I have 3 plus 12 is equal to 15. And yet again, I have a very easy equation to solve 
for the first variable. So y is equal to 15 divided by 3, uh, sorry, 15 divided by 5, which of course is equal to 3. Okay, and again, I need to take this value and insert it into one of the equations. So I'm taking a look here, and it looks like equation 1 is the easier one this time. So let's take equation 1, and wherever I see a y, I'm going to replace it by 3. So we've got 2x minus 3 times y, which now I know is equal to 3, is equal to 1. And so here, 2x minus 9 is equal to 1. 2x is equal to 1 plus 9, which is 10. And so x is equal to 5. And so my answer here, I'll just give it in point form, is equal to 5 comma 3. So let's take a look back now at the steps. So we'll take example 3 because this is about as complicated as it gets. So step 1 is to multiply the equations in order to achieve the same or opposite coefficient. In this case here, we multiplied both equations so that the x had a uh, coefficient of 6 in both equations. Okay, so step 1, multiply the equations if necessary to get the same or opposite sign coefficient. Okay, step 2 is to add or subtract the equations in such a way that you eliminate the variable. In this case here, the signs were the same, so we subtracted. If we think back to uh, example 1, when the signs were opposite, we added the two equations. Okay. Then what did we do? Once we subtracted, in this case here, we solved our equation for the first variable, and then we substituted that variable into one of the two equations to obtain the second variable. And this is how the method of substitution works. Now, if you look at this equation, sorry, the method of elimination works. So if you look at these two equations, you'll notice that a lot of our application type questions tend to look like these. They're not necessarily given in slope-intercept form, and often there's coefficients other than one in front of all the variables. So that's why the method of um, elimination is necessary. But if you think back to the first two problems, where we could have solved it with substitution, we see that elimination is often just the easier method. So you might want to try some of the homework questions using elimination, even though they're under the substitution section.